hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. Heme refers to the blood, the red blood cells. Phagocytic refers to engulfing or eating. So literally, hemophagocytic means eating of red blood cells. Lymph refers to the lymphoid cells, the B and T cells. And histiocytosis refers to accumulation and infiltration of cells such as the monocytes, macrophages, and dendritic cells. So lymphohistiocytosis actually means more of an accumulation, activation of T cells and the macrophages and the monocytes, which actually end up eating red blood cells. Hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis is a syndrome of excessive inflammation and tissue destruction due to abnormal immune activation. The abnormal immune activation leads to a hyperinflammatory immune state. Now, there are a number of key players in the pathophysiology, the macrophages, the phagocytes, and then you have the cytotoxic T lymphocytes, which are your lymphoid cells, as well as your natural killer cells. Macrophages are professional antigen-presenting cells derived from circulating monocytes. Macrophages are phagocytes. They engulf, process, and normally present foreign antigens to the lymphocytes to initiate a specific immune response towards that antigen. Cytotoxic T lymphocytes become activated and proliferate. The purpose of the cytotoxic T lymphocytes and natural killer cells are to recognize these foreign antigens and essentially eliminate it. Natural killer cells and cytotoxic T lymphocytes are very different, but for the purpose of this video, their actions are similar. So these guys roam around areas of inflammation and scout for these foreign antigens, which may be expressed on infected cells. When they find them, they kill the infected cells by forming a perforant channel and releasing granzymes or proteases into the cell. The infected cells will die after receiving the proteases released by the cytotoxic T lymphocytes and natural killer cells. During this process, cytokines are released by, by the cytotoxic T lymphocytes and the natural killer cells because it's mounting an immune response. It's promoting the inflammatory response to essentially ask other cells to help out to contain and fix the issue. Macrophages get attracted to these sites of inflammation and become activated by the pro-inflammatory cytokines, causing them to release more cytokines to help out and to recruit more inflammatory cells. Oftentimes, macrophages can be overactive and release too many cytokines even after the culprit or the problem has been resolved. In this scenario, cells such as the natural killer cells and cytotoxic T lymphocytes will actually eliminate the stressed macrophage, again via the perforant channel and the granzymes. This is a normal example of what should happen. The immune system is under control and regulated. In hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis, we have a hyperactive immune state. There is loss of control. The hyperinflammatory dysregulated immune state is thought to be caused by the absence of normal downregulation of the macrophages and the lymphocytes. Hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis can be classified as primary or secondary. Primary hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis is hereditary and caused by defects in perforin or granzyme B mediated toxicity. So in this diagram for primary hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis, you have defect um, and you have impaired perforin and granzyme mediated cytotoxicity. These cells will still release a lot of cytokines because they need help which will activate more macrophages and also increase um, cytokine production by the macrophages. Now also note that when macrophages are hyperactive, 
the cytotoxic T cells and natural killer cells are unable to control these hyperactive macrophages because of defects in perforin and granzyme B. Secondary causes of hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis include infections, particularly Epstein-Barr virus, malignancies, as well as autoimmune diseases. In Epstein-Barr virus infections, these guys normally reside in B cells and can hide within them, staying dormant. Now, cytotoxic T lymphocytes will screen and destroy infective cells, such as the B cells, if they can identify the foreign Epstein-Barr virus. With Epstein-Barr virus infection, some people have impaired cytotoxic pathways against the Epstein-Barr virus and are unable to control the Epstein-Barr virus infection, thus again resulting in cytokine release by the cytotoxic T lymphocytes, resulting in severe infectious mononucleosis, which will, can eventually lead to hemophagocytic lymphohistocytosis. I think the key principle to know about the different causes of hemophagocytic lymphohistocytosis is that you have activation of cytotoxic T lymphocytes, as well as hyperactive macrophages. Uncontrolled activated uh, macrophages can lead to something called macrophage activation syndrome. But forget about that syndrome for now. In hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis, macrophages become activated and secrete excessive amount of cytokines, ultimately causing severe tissue damage that can lead to organ failure. Natural killer cells and or cytotoxic T lymphocytes fail to eliminate the activated macrophages, either because of defects in perforin formation on the macrophage or release and function of the proteases, granzyme B. Unregulated and uncontrolled macrophages will secrete many different cytokines activating one another, resulting in an agro cell, which can start eating up anything really around it. Macrophages can even eat red blood cells when overactivated, hence hemophagocytosis. But also the macrophages can begin eating platelets, resulting in thrombocytopenia, and leukocytes, the white blood cells, causing leukopenia, low white cell count. Overactivation of the macrophages, as well as the cytotoxic T lymphocytes, can lead to release of so many cytokines, resulting in a cytokine storm. Cytokines produced include interferon gamma, which is an important one to remember in this condition, as well as TNF-alpha, interleukin-6, interleukin-10, interleukin-12, all of which will subsequently cause multi-organ failure. Clinical features of hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis, as you can expect, include fever, splenomegaly, deranged bloods including anemia, thrombocytopenia, leukopenia or leukocytosis, so either low or elevated white cell count, Organ failure can involve the liver, causing liver hepatitis. And when you get liver hepatitis, you get elevated triglycerides, hypertriglyceridemia. You can have coagulopathy, as well as hypofibrinogenemia, which is low fibrinogen levels in the blood. In this disease, you get elevated ferritin, and this is from the activated macrophages. Multi-organ failure in this condition include respiratory failure as well as renal failure. Investigations for anyone suspected of uh, hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis include blood tests of full blood count, coagulation profile, including D-dimer and fibrinogen, liver function tests, serum triglyceride, serum ferritin, which will both be high, there is soluble interleukin-2 receptor A, alpha. Important to identify the possible causes as well as the complications associated with um, the lymphohistiocytosis. So essentially, as infection can be the cause, you culture everything, the blood, the bone marrow, the urine, as well as order viral PCR. 
A bone marrow aspirate can reveal uh, features of hemophagocytosis. CT chest abdo pelvis can look for malignancies as well as potential infection, which again is a cause of this condition. Lumbar puncture as well as MRI can also find potential cause as well as complications. Molecular testing, including immunologic profile and genetic testing, can look for, for hereditary causes of hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. Treatment involves urgent referral to a hematologist and or oncologist. Immunosuppression using steroids, because remember, it's a hyperactive immune state, cytokine release, and so using steroids can dampen the immune response. Transfuse if you have low red blood cells due to hemophagocytosis or low platelets. Correct coagulopathy associated with this condition. You have low fibrinogen, so you can use fresh frozen plasma, thawed platelets, as well as cryoprecipitate. Identify the cause and treat the underlying cause. An allogenic hemopoietic stem cell transplantation is um, the final treatment option. Prognosis is quite important. Untreated people only have months to live. And usually because it is very difficult to diagnose or they're undiagnosed. Of those treated, um, 50% of people survive. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. In summary, it is a condition where you have hyperactivation of the immune uh, response involving macrophages as well as cytotoxic T lymphocytes. This will result in a cytokine storm, which will cause multi-organ failure, but also the activated macrophage can start engulfing other things in your body, such as your red blood cells, hence hemophagocytosis.